Hi, this is Kevin from Controller Works, and this video is addressing uh, one of the most common requests that I get is, um, I love the design of, of your company's keyboards. Uh, we make the, what do we have here? We have the um, Mini 36, the Mini 42, we have coming out the the City 42, uh, when are you going to come out with a wireless version? And the answer is is going to be probably never. And um, I'm trying, I'll try to explain the reasons for that. So the there's three main reasons why a vendor would would shy away from um, making a wireless keyboard, and the the big one is really support. Um, the second reason are relates to regulatory and import export um, regulations, and the third is just what your what your market strategy is as a as a company and as as a business. So those are the three big big categories. Um, the regulatory issues, um, I have my opinions on that. I'm not going to say anything directly about others business but um you know pretty much every every country on earth is going to regulate a a wireless device a device that is designed to intentionally um you know put radiation into into the environment and um uh i used to be in the wireless industry uh i used to s represent a company my former employer uh at the wi-fi alliance and um um, you know, I was very involved in that. And unfortunately, a very small vendor like myself does not have the resources to do the, the testing and the certification needed to ship um, a wireless device, particularly not to ship it um, internationally. A, a good chunk of our business is, is international and um, we just can't do it. So um, some people will claim that you can take a, a wireless module that itself may or may not be certified and you can plug it into something else and then say that it has the same certification that is, is not my understanding. Um, my understanding is that really the most you can do is kind of change some of the superficial, uh, labeling, you know, the stickers on the product and that's about it. And then you have to recertify it. Um, Another issue is not just related uh, regulation wise is not just the the wireless capability itself, but um, the battery. So a lot of countries these days have special regulations around um, shipping and importing and exporting um, batteries and devices that contain batteries. And um, that's a big problem. So you're either, um, not going to be allowed to ship your product or you're going to ship the batteries and the product separately and then people have to assemble it. That's a whole issue. Um, these are complex devices. I mean, we really don't even want um, people opening these up. Um, so we have hex screws on these. I mean, we don't, uh, this is really not a DIY product. Um, and that kind of gets to the the market strategy and what that means for support. So, um, mechanical keyboards are kind of a specialty hobby market, and so there are lots of vendors. They're selling relatively small volumes, and um, uh, as a result, it's a it's a DIY type of market. So people are hobbyists and they're assembling their own product because in order to get that level of product assembled at such low volumes, it would be extremely expensive. And that's why our keyboards, I mean, most of these keyboards are over $300 a piece because we sell them um, fully assembled and tested. And so the, the, the market strategy of controller works has kind of been going against that, which is that we are trying to offer a a fully turnkey product. So um, 
uh, these keyboards are not available as a DIY kit at all. They're only available uh, fully assembled. So that's a brand new City 42. Um, and in addition to the actual mechanical assembly, so we don't want people going in and connecting batteries or doing things the wrong way or, or um, you know, breaking the threading of the, of the case for the screws because the, the aluminum is a soft metal or, you know, damaging connectors or, or anything like that. We just don't want people in the, in the case. Um, and so we've tried to make a turnkey product. Likewise, on the software side, um, really the gold standard right now for mechanical keyboard firmware is QMK. It's just the way it is. It's an open source project. It has um, many, many thousands of contributors to it. And pretty much any feature you could possibly want in a mechanical keyboard, um, except mainly for wireless, is going to be in the QMK code base. And the reason why um, uh, many types of wireless support is not there, there is some wireless support, it's very limited, but um, the reason why wireless support is so limited is because QMK has an open source license that is really not compatible with with um, um, with proprietary uh, wireless drivers. So you just cannot you cannot mix the two. And there are other code bases, and um, uh, I've tried them out, and they're very nice. Uh, they make very nice keyboards. However. The ease of use um, of those projects is is not up to the level that QMK is. So, in other words, um, in order to customize your key map, for example, one of those projects you have to um, create a project on GitHub. You have to know how to do that. You have to customize your key map um, uh, in GitHub, or at least get your customized key map into GitHub. And then you have to use GitHub's build tools to to go and build your firmware and then download it and then use a, a, a method to get it on your keyboard. And um, that's just too difficult for, for what we're going for. We do have customers that are experts, but we wanted to make it so that if a person was coming, coming to us with... Um, mainly ergonomic needs you know they were not technical experts they maybe had health problems or um you know issues that were that were driving them to us for the ergonomics we didn't want to say oh well learn how to solder and learn how to you know do automation on on github and then then you can have your needs met we want to say we're going to build the hardware for you the key map configuration is going to be can be done with a GUI if you want and then if you really want to get advanced you can customize it there's room to customize the software but not really the hardware and so um, right now the only real way to do that there's there's via um, and then there's VL which is a, a fork of, of QMK and those are the two ways to do a GUI. Uh, we're small enough, we just don't have the resource to, to do our own um, GUI. There's other projects out there, but um, those are great GUIs for key map uh, building. And so that's where we have to be for a, for a turnkey um, for a turnkey product. The other thing is it is um, all of our current products are based on the RP2040 processor, and that is very easy to load new firmware. So you just you hit a, a, a firmware loading key on the key map, or you can press a hardware button twice, the reset button twice, and then the the uh, keyboard looks like a USB flash drive, and then you drag the new firmware onto the onto the drive, and it reboots for you, and then you have new firmware. That's very easy. Um, uh, some of the other processors, you need specialty software load firmware. It's a little bit more finicky. So that kind of goes against our our strategy of, of providing a more turnkey product. Um, you know, I mentioned support. So that's really something that can make or break a, a business. So we're going for 
a turnkey product. It's a luxury product. We've really tried to refine every aspect of the product to be as 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 great as perfect as it can be. Um, it certainly certainly are not perfect products, but we keep driving to to improve them and make them better. And what you kind of want as a small vendor is is a higher dollar per transaction, and then you can offer better service and a better product. And so. Um, we're able to do that just with the USB interface and with Wi-Fi, the support burden would be high enough that it wouldn't be worthwhile to, to do what we're doing. So um, even with USB, um, even with USB, we run into issues with um, even something like a USB hub um, uh, can have connectivity issues. Um, uh, there are quirks to these things. There are non-standard, you know, ways that people do even USB, but that's still much more reliable than a Wi-Fi connection. And it really would not be worthwhile shipping someone a product that needs any more support than than the USB um, than the USB firmware does. So. Um, that's really it. If we were selling a lower dollar dollar value product, and then it had Wi, you know, wireless, and then everyone was, you know, on the on the Discord or or sending emails with support questions because they were having trouble building firmware that they they couldn't connect their device that they were even with a split keyboard you have the two halves that need to communicate um, all sorts of complication. As soon as you add wireless, you you have a much more complicated product. So, um, it just would make it so that the business was not worthwhile. So, um, you know, it could be in the future if we were to do a more DIY oriented product, it's a possibility. Um, maybe that product could be could be one that would support wireless. By using some other third-party module that the cut the customer would be responsible for integrating maybe that's possible oh the other thing is really um, wireless people always treat wireless as a feature to be added onto an existing product and it's really the first product choice you would make in a keyboard um, so um, I'll give you an example all the keyboards that we have made um, um, they have tons of LED lighting in them, and these these LEDs um, use a lot of current, and so you really wouldn't want a product that's covered in LEDs um, for a wireless device because it's gonna it's gonna kill your battery life. So number one, you wouldn't have that type of lighting. Um, number two, like the City Forty Two. Um, this thing's built like a tank. Uh, it's got a giant thick metal back plate. It is extremely rigid as a result. Um, uh, so this metal acts like a Faraday cage and would block the, the, the wireless transceiver. So you would need some kind of, you know, plastic window or something for the, for the antenna to, um, to, to, radiate from and um, that's just not how this was designed so um, it you know again it has to do with the volume so these switches um, uh, they have a very they really need a very narrow um, a very thin piece of material to clip into it's only I think like 1.3 or 1.2 millimeters for the thickness of the of the the plate, and um, a lot of vendors they will three D print a case for the keyboard, and it's actually hard to make a strong enough uh, top plate that's three D printed to clip into that thickness. But um, we can do it by machining just from a block of aluminum, and um, you know it just it makes a more premium experience more durability and more more solidity to the to the feel of the product um, and 
So yeah, that that's just all part of the part of the package. Also, the processor. Um, uh, there are wireless uh, processors out there. You know, we that would change our ease of use. So um, there are lower power processors, but then the the ease of use for for um, keyboard firmware is much as much reduced. So we would be we would be asking people to you know go through a much more laborious build process, a much more laborious process to configure their firmware. Um, so then you you get into a, a DIY user base and a, a very expert user base rather than someone who might be more casual but want a luxury product. So um, it I, the analogy I draw is like it's like an electric car versus a a, a gas or a diesel car. Okay, uh, gas or electric is not a minor feature of a car like what kind of radio you might have or the seat covering. It's a very basic aspect of the car. It's the first decision you make when you start to design a car. Is this going to be an electric vehicle or is it going to be a gasoline engine? Um, and then that just drives every other design decision in, in your project. So, um, you know, could we do some kind of lower cost, um, more wireless oriented thing? Yes, yeah, we could. Um, it wouldn't have a full metal case. It wouldn't be covered in LEDs. It wouldn't have sensors that that like to draw current. Um, um, you know, there would be all kinds of things that would be different. Um, it almost certainly would not have a nice case that would have the battery buried inside of it. It would probably have, you know, some more informal kind of deal like these these PCB cases this sort of business um, so yeah it would be a very different product and probably for a different um, base of customers it's one that we might pursue but um, really for a super low volume um, vendor like controller works we just can't handle wireless um, we could go the expert DIY route and provide some tools for experts who want to dabble in wireless um, and do that kind of build process, but it really hasn't been our, our customer base. They ask for it, but um, you know we can't support it as a vendor. We can't support it as a, as a vendor is, is the bottom line. But maybe with a more DIY oriented product um, than then maybe we could do that. But we really haven't offered any uh, DIY products so far. So um, so yeah, doing wireless would really be a change in direction for controller works that we haven't gone down that path. We've tried to go down the path of taking a successful um, layout, which has been the corn the type of layout, and then trying to refine it and perfect it um, in the in the QMK code base, which is again the, the gold standard. So um, every feature you could want is going to be either in QMK itself or the veal fork, um, even for very advanced things. And then we don't have to um, we have much less support. We still do have support with the USB connector and and uh, sometimes you know confusing, difficult to understand things happen. Um, but you know, this is an expensive product and we try to have kind of white glove service. So if you have a support question, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be myself on the discord or an email, um, trying to answer your question. So, you know, we feel that that's, that's justified given how expensive these products are. So, um, I hope that answers your question and, um, we get asked that a lot and I, I hope that makes it clearer that, um, we'd love to offer a wireless product, but it just we can't support it as a, as a small company with the, the code that is the code bases that are out there right now. So uh, thanks a lot.